I do appreciate the attention because of my life work and my objective in my short life so far is to raise awareness in hopes of eradicating radical ignorance of these uh, world issues, uh, world issues, uh, genocides, war crimes. But before I get into my my uh, my talk with you, is I'd like to begin by not only thanking my teacher for having me, but also facing history and ourselves um, who reached out to me, specifically Judy Boyne, who is a good friend of mine, and uh, this was speaker based on them. Unfortunately, she couldn't come here today with us. She had other school to visit, as I've been to many schools with her. But we're very fortunate she sent uh, Brian Fong with us, uh, the program associate of facing history. So he's here with us. Um, I wanted to begin in two parts. Uh, first thing is uh, I want to touch on current events, on what's going on in the world, to kind of connect it to what happened in Rwanda. Um, because uh, there is a reaction to everything, uh, action to a reaction. And after that, since you've watched a lot of my, uh, at least one of my testimonial and some of the family movies, I know there's questions or sometimes necro, the teacher told me you watched, we can go into that. And uh, so the last part of this will be question and answer session. So I'll try to do the first part in 30 minutes and maybe 30 other minutes in you know, more time for the question and answer. All right, as I began the current state of the world, I think you've been watching state of the city, state of the state, state of the nation, from president down to the mayors, I want to be the one to give you the state of the world. Uh, they said the other states are doing good, but the world is doing bad. And by Unfortunately, I had to break the news to you, but you watch the news. From North Korea to Syria to Crimea to Libya to Somalia to Colombia, all the way to California in this country of the United States. So they had to use the year, the, the areas that has year from Korea to California but uh, I'm a poet, so I like uh, to use such uh, words or phrases. No all the areas that end with ear are in a bad state. For example, Austria in Europe is doing good, and a country called Tanzania in uh, East Africa is doing very great. As a matter of fact, the capital of Tanzania, called Dar es Salaam, means house of peace and they actually managed to keep that peace. It's one of the few countries in Africa where every so many years the president has to be switched. They have elections one way or another. And it's sometimes done because uh, the president before was a Muslim, the next president has to be a Christian. So there's no one group running the country indefinitely. Unfortunately, if you go west of uh, Tanzania, to a country called Burundi, which, which capital is Bujumbura, and it was uh, historically uh, one of the member kingdom of Rwanda. It used to be called Rwanda Urundi. So be before Belgians, before Germans came to Africa, it was one kingdom with Rwanda. So we have a lot in common, including language. Uh, we call them our sisters and our brothers because even our language is the same. But unfortunately, they still have those divisions that cause the problem in Rwanda. Uh, the Hutus, the Tuts, the Twas, those divisions, which, as we talk later, you understand, were fabricated by Belgium to divide and rule the people. And uh, it almost worked in Rwanda. We had to lose one million people for us to get rid of it. Burundi has no wrong from that 
So as we speak, I have family members in Burundi who are not fun every day of what's going on. The killings that happened before the genocide in Rwanda happened in Burundi. Bodies of uh, dead people have been found in lakes throughout the country, unfortunately, and if, uh, in Rwanda. Bodies were thrown in rivers, as you remember. So stuff that reminds me of Rwanda is happening in Burundi. And unfortunately, it's not only in Burundi. If you go north of Rwanda, past the country of Uganda, one country over, there's a new country, not even five years old, called South Sudan. Uh, the capital of South Sudan is Juba. And our best friends I went to high school with who had relocated when they, got, they gained independence from the other Sudan, which as you know to a study is, is responsible for that food, another genocide in this, uh, in this century, the 24th century. But since the independence in South Sudan, they have no room how to uh, live together yet. So another ethnic division are still happening. And I use those two examples in Broad and South Sudan because I actually know people who give me information from the ground, you know. Now, that was my little bit, state of the world.